Welcome. Welcome to King of Kings Lutheran Church. Thank you for joining us for worship. Thank you for joining us for worship online. We are beginning to transition back to regular Sunday morning worship. As I have said before, we are taking baby steps. We plan to continue with both the live stream video worship services and the small group midweek communion services for the foreseeable future. The coronavirus is still a threat that we should take seriously. If you are in one of the vulnerable categories, please do not come until the threat is passed. Please do not put your health in jeopardy. We will be practicing social distancing and expecting everyone to wear a mask. We will keep the services short and continue to disinfect regularly. Beginning today, we are opening the 8.30 service for those who want to attend. We will open the 11 o'clock service when our musicians and others who work at the 11 o'clock service are ready to do so. Please be patient. It will likely be a long time before the threat is passed and we can return to our normal worship practices. All that being said, happy Father's Day. I hope and pray this will be a good day for you to celebrate fatherhood in some way or another. Our opening hymn is How Firm a Foundation. God bless us as we worship together.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let, let us, us come, come before him with, with thanksgiving, and, and extol him with, with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In, In his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, Come let, let us bow down, down in worship. worship. Let, let us kneel before, before the, the Lord, Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with confession and forgiveness. Please stand. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We pause at this time for a moment of silent reflection to consider our sinfulness and need for God's grace. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we, we confess that, that we are by nature, nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what, what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of God's word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The hymn of praise is, Let us ever walk with Jesus, and you may be seated.
The New Testament lesson is taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the sixth chapter, beginning at verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone to obey him as slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things that you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God. The benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends the first reading. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel recorded in Matthew chapter 10, beginning at verse 21. Jesus said, Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rebel against their parents and have them put to death. All men will hate you because of me, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth. You will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A student is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the student to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If the head of the house has been called Beelzebub, how much more the members of his household. So do not be afraid of them. There is nothing concealed that will not be made known or hidden that will not be made known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs of your head are numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I will disown him before my Father in heaven. Here ends the gospel reading. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Jesus said to his disciples, you are worth more than many sparrows. Jesus' point is that people are worth a great deal more than sparrows. But it is also clear that sparrows too have worth. Jesus said two sparrows are, told, are sold for a penny, yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. Sparrows too 
have value in the eyes of our Father, Creator, God. We live in a time of heightened awareness of the value of life, whether it's human, animal, or vegetable. Human life is dependent upon animal and vegetable life. We live in an interdependent ecosphere within which sparrows have worth. It is good that we are now so aware of the value of other forms of life, but our heightened awareness of the value of life has led to some messy dilemmas and confrontations. You will remember some of the more well-known conflicts featuring life values. What is worth more, the logging industry or the spotted owl? Remember that? What is worth more, a dam that provides hydroelectric power and recreational opportunities for many people, or the welfare of migrating salmon or the snail darter? What is worth more, a fur coat, regardless of whether it's worn for pleasure or necessity, or the life of the fur-bearing animal? What is worth more, the life of an unborn child, the life of a mother, the life of a terminally ill person, or your life or mine? What gives life value? These are tough questions, and there are right answers to the questions. Morally correct answers do exist. They are not usually the easy answers. The right answers are not synthesized from the values and ideas of various opponents and proponents. The truth of right and wrong exists independently of situations and the laws and customs, ideas and feelings of the earthly powers that be. There is right and wrong, and not just what is convenient and satisfying for you at any given point in your life. There is right and wrong, and not just what seems best for the powerful. There is right and wrong, and not just what makes the most sense from a profit and loss business perspective. There is right and wrong, apart from what popular society declares to be right and wrong at any given point in history. God has established right and wrong. In our text, Jesus says, whoever acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. The King James Version of the Bible translates confess instead of acknowledge. What does it mean to acknowledge or confess Jesus? Neither word is a particularly good translation in this case, the basic meaning of the Greek word in question, which, by the way, is homologeo, is to say the same thing. To acknowledge Jesus, to confess Jesus, means to say and do the things he would say and do. The goal of the Christian life is to say and do the same things Jesus would say and do in the same situation. Jesus lived for over 30 years on this earth without sinning. He knew what was right and what was wrong. He did what was right according to God's will, not just what was right according to the laws and customs of his day. Jesus did things that were not customary. Jesus did things that were against the laws of the Jews. He did not transgress God's law. Rather, Jesus said and did the things commanded by his Father. Jesus did what was right in God's sight. It's important to note that Jesus did not benefit or profit because he did and said all the right things. Jesus suffered and died because he did and said all the right things. But he died according to the good will of his Father. We are often unable to do what Jesus would do or say what Jesus would say. Asking what would Jesus do is always a good exercise. But we are sinners, imperfect, finite, limited in knowledge, incomplete in understanding, and rebellious by nature. We transgress God's law. We cannot perfectly interpret and obey ten simple commandments. Consequently, we deserve God's wrath and punishment. But God has chosen to love us anyway. God loves sinners, and he has sacrificed his own dear sinless son to save us from our sins and the punishment we deserve. We are worth a lot to God. My friends, you are worth far more than sparrows. You are worth the lifeblood of Jesus Christ. That was the price God chose to pay to redeem you. 
St. Paul puts it this way to the Corinthians. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. The current discussions regarding the value of life, whether it's human, animal, or vegetable, black, white, or brown, focuses on rights. I am not so sure that Christians have rights. If we do, they rank below the privileges and responsibilities that we have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. We are the children of God. He loves us and he sacrificed his son for us. God has justified, saved, and reconciled us. We are worth a great deal to God. He has given us a lot. We are his children, fellow heirs with Jesus Christ of paradise. And there are certain privileges and responsibilities that we have received together with the gift of salvation. Privileges and responsibilities for living this life. Because God loves us, and according to his grace has given us faith, we have certain privileges. Let me mention two. First, we have the privilege to claim the forgiveness of God that he purchased with Jesus' blood. God has demonstrated his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus' righteousness is now ours by grace through faith in his saving work. Another way to look at this privilege is like this. God has made us his children. We are the king's kids. At the king's castle, there is a huge swimming pool filled with living water, and we get to swim in it, play in it, and even drink it. This water purifies and gives us eternal life. Enjoy it, but remember that it costs the life of the king's son to build the pool. The death of the Son of God was not a mistake. It was not an accident. It was intentional. But you are worth that much to God. Second, we have the privilege to have fellowship with God, to trust him, to call upon him in prayer, to worship him, to read his word. God does not rule his people from afar. He rules from within our hearts. God has revealed himself to us. He is here among us. He has given us his word and the sacraments. He promises to hear our prayers. He desires our worship. Such are only a few of the privileges that we have been granted by our almighty and merciful God. God has given us certain responsibilities along with the privileges. I will mention only two. First, we have the responsibility to let God be God. It is our responsibility to seek to know and to do the will of God. We are to acknowledge and confess our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you want to call it towing the Christian party line, so be it. Just remember, you are not your own. You have been bought with a price. You, like Jesus, are a child of God. Second, we have the responsibility to struggle with the issues and make witness to our perception of the truth as Christians. Years ago, there was a slogan which was popular in some Christian circles. It went like this. God said it, I believe it, that settles it. It's not that simple. There is ultimate truth, there is ultimate right and wrong, but we have a difficult time discerning it. We walk by faith and not by sight. But our faith is not perfect and our sight is weak. Our walk is a struggle, but it is our responsibility to struggle, to follow Jesus. Do not ignore the issues, my friends. For instance, it's tough to watch the news and hear again and again of the coronavirus, sickness and death and all the disruption it causes. It's Hard to see the protests and read the Black Lives Matter articles and sort through the arguments and the emotions. It's easy to drop out and not be involved. It's a challenge to pray about such things and search the Word of God for passages and truths that apply to the issues. It's harder still to try and say and do what Jesus would do to confess him and acknowledge him before men. Today's gospel lesson from the 10th chapter of St. Matthew's gospel has three times where Jesus tells his disciples, do not be afraid. My friends, do not be afraid to say and do what you think Jesus would say and do. 
Do not be afraid to pay the price for saying and doing what is right in God's sight. Jesus paid the ultimate price for doing the right thing on the cross, and God raised him on the third day. God loves you. You are worth a great deal to him, and he will give you the words to say and the courage to do the right thing. Do not be afraid to make Christian choices and to take a Christian stand. Our salvation does not depend upon our choices, but upon God's choice, and he has gracious, graciously chosen you. My friends, God loves you. You are worth more than many sparrows, yet sparrows have worth, as does every other form of life. The life and justice issues we face today are difficult. Pastor Both and I have the responsibility to study the issues and God's word, discern what is true, and publicly proclaim what is, to the best of our knowledge, right and wrong on your behalf, on behalf of King of Kings. We will do that. We thank you for your prayers, support, and encouragement, but you also have a responsibility to struggle with the issues and study God's word and discern what is true and then take a stand for what is, to the best of your knowledge, good, right, and true. Confess Jesus. Follow him. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand and join me in confessing our Christian faith, faith in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we ordinarily receive the offering instead of passing the plates We've put the offering plate in the back, and you are welcome to give as you can, as you are moved, as you are able on your way in or out of church. And we thank you for mailing your offerings in or giving electronically. We have the great privilege and responsibility to give back to God in the service of his ministry and mission in this place, part of what he has first given us. We'll continue with the prayers. Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their needs. We pray for fathers on Father's Day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the godly men you have placed in our lives to share their faith and guide us in the way that we should go. We thank you for their leadership and encouragement, discipline and help. We thank you for the children you have given us that you have given to fathers. Help us to lead, encourage, discipline and help them so that they may grow and mature and lead godly lives for your glory and the benefit of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace officers, firefighters, and first responders. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have called some to work in law enforcement, firefighting, and, and as first responders. We pray give them the wisdom, strength, and support of the community that they need to do their jobs well and serve faithfully. Guard and protect them, keep them from harm and danger, and help them to be of ready assistance when we are in danger or need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, all who struggle with poor health, or to recover from injury or surgery, those we name aloud and those we hold in our hearts. We pray for Dale, Greta, Dennis, Jim, Joe, Will, Joshua, Andrea, Trish, Dwayne, Frank, Patty, Jennifer, Verna, and Cody. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the great physician of our hearts, minds, bodies, and souls. 
You never denied healing to anyone who came to you. We pray heal those that we bring to you. Touch them, speak to them, strengthen them, and restore them according to your goodness and mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who struggle day by day with persistent illness or pain, those for whom we have prayed again and again. Heavenly Father, we look forward to the great day when there will be no more pain or disease, injury or death. Until that day comes, we pray bless us with the encouragement, faith and strength we need to cope with the difficulties that you have allowed us to experience. Make us strong to carry the burdens of life laid upon us by this sinful world. Help us to see beyond the problems and troubles which press upon us daily to apprehend the joys of grace that you promise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are celebrating the anniversary of their baptism, especially Katrina May, Craig Perry, Nicholas Perry, Corinne Bunker, and Shane Bunker. Almighty God, we thank you for your word and the sacraments around which we gather. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit and for gathering us together into the one holy Christian church. We thank you for the washing of regeneration and renewal that you perform by means of holy baptism. Help us each to remember and celebrate your grace in baptism and never doubt your saving work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who use our food bank. God, our Father and provider, we, we thank you for daily bread and for bread enough to share. We pray for those who do not have enough to eat especially those children who receive most of their food at school. Help them during the summer vacation to find the food that they need. Bless us with generosity and resources of your bounty so that we may continue to stock our food bank and meet the needs of our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our drive through prayer chapel, those who see it, those who use it, and those who staff it. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for the great gift of prayer for your promise to hear and act upon our prayers, and for your role as intercessor at the right hand of God the Father. We thank you for the men and women of our prayer team who staff the drive through chapel. Bless their investment of time and effort. May their ministry produce good fruit. We pray also for those who see our signs and tent, those who need to, that they would stop and be ministered to. Assure those who have stopped to pray that you love them and are at work to sustain and bless them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. Hear us now as we pray, even as Jesus taught us to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. I give thanks to my God always for you, because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus. You are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the, for the grace, grace of, of God, God that, that brings salvation, salvation has, has appeared to all. It teaches us to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. The, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Our closing hymn is Children of the Heavenly Father. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.